Hello students, in this video we'll begin our discussion of reciprocal collections of vectors. Let's be given a collection of vectors. Let's do this in R3. E1, E2, and E3 that span R3. i.e. the determinants of E1, E2, E3, which I'm going to abbreviate as just E1, E2, E3, like this, just for a, sh for a, nota for a shorthand notation, is not zero. Okay, so in other words, this collection is a uh, basis, right? Hence, E1, E2, E3 is a basis of R3. Okay. I'm going to consider a reciprocal set of vectors, so define E1 upper to be E2 cross E3 lower over this determinant, E1, E2, E3, okay? E2 upper, E2 upper is going to be what? It's going to be E3 cross E1 over this determinant, E1, E2, E3, lowers. And then finally, E3 upper, E3 upper is going to be what? E3 upper is going to be E1 cross E2, lower, lower, over E1, E2, E3, like that, okay? And this collection of vectors E1, E2, and E3, so E1, E2, and E3, E1 upper, E2 upper, E3 upper, is called the reciprocal basis. Okay. All right, and so now, of course, the idea is that what we want to do is, the reason it's called the reciprocal basis, we'll prove this in, in further videos when we start to understand the properties of these things, but it's easy to check that if I look at E1, the determinant of E1, E2, and E3, we can check, therefore, that if I multiply this by the determinant of E1 upper, E2 upper, and E3 upper, we get one. In other words, their determinants are reciprocals of each other, right? So we'll prove this identity in a further video because it uses a lot of sort of algebra like the backhand identity and some vector identities, right? But what I'm more interested in this video is to show that these things, that if I expand a vector in either one of these bases, I can find what the coefficients are easily, right? And so let's consider this. So here's a proposition for us. If V is a vector in R3, then this implies what? This implies that V is going to be the inner product, the dot product of V with E1 upper, E1 lower, plus the inner product of V with E2 upper, E2 lower, plus the inner product of V with E3 upper, E3 lower, like that, okay? And so this hints at our Einstein notation, right? So in Einstein notation, what we'd say is the following. So if we used Einstein notation, this would just be V dot EI upper and then EI lower in Einstein notation. This is Einstein summation. That's the Einstein summation we mentioned. In other words, the repeated index, one upper. In other words, in the more parlance lingo, one contravariant component and then one covariant component that share the same index, you sum over the shared index. Okay? That's the Einstein summation equation. So how do we prove something like this? Well, we know that V is some number lambda 1 E1 lower plus lambda 2 E2 lower plus lambda 3 E3 lower. And so what I can do now is I can take both sides of the equation, I can cross both sides of the equation with, for example, E2, E3, right? So if I look at V dot E2 cross E3, what would that give me? That would be lambda 1 E1 plus lambda 2 E2 plus lambda 3 E3 dot product 
with E2 cross E3. Okay. And now the salient features at this vector over here is what? This is perpendicular to both E2 and E3. Okay. And so therefore, V dot E2 cross E3 is going to be what? Well, it's going to be lambda 1, E1 dot E2 cross E3. And then E2 dot this thing is going to be 0, and E3 dot this thing is going to be 0, right? Now, what do we know about E1 dot E2 cross E3? That's the triple scalar product of E1, E2, and E3. So this is exactly equal to lambda 1 times E1, E2, and then E3, right? And therefore, we just found what lambda 1 is, right? We found that lambda 1 is exactly E2 cross E3 over the determinant of E1, E2, E3. And what is this expression over here? This expression over here is, just, of course, dot with what? Um, dot with V, right? Dot with V. And the dot product is some interesting put over here, right? Good. And so what is this E2? cross E3 over the determinant. That's exactly E1 upper. So we've just shown that lambda 1, so hence lambda 1 is equal to E1, E1 upper dot V. And then similarly, lambda 2 is going to be E2 upper dot V, and lambda 3 is going to be E3 upper dot V, right? Just by the exact same, the exact same argument, except with lambda 1 changed with lambda 2 lambda 3. So we've just shown that if I wanted to expand any vector in this covariant basis, we're going to call this basis over here E1, E2, E3 lowers a covariant basis, I can find the coefficients in that covariant basis by looking at the dot product of the vector with the contravariant reciprocal basis elements. And we can see by symmetry too that if I replace the uppers with lowers, that I have the same exact formula for the covariant vectors in terms of the contravariant vectors in terms of their reciprocal basis. So in other words, these bases are called self-reciprocal to each other. If you sort of do the, if you, if you do this procedure over and over again, there's a symmetry embedded in this in this, in this process over here. So the most important thing though to, ca to capture is that this first approximation, this first idea of how the summation convention works, is that if you want to sum over a given quantity, there has to be one contravariant component and one covariant component that share a common index. Once that index is shared between a covariant and a contravariant component, the Einstein summation convention allows us to simplify dramatically computations which involve vectors and reciprocal bases. Thank you very much.